Hi everyone and welcome back to my tiny house in the forest. Um, a couple of videos ago I told you guys that I uh, will lift the veil for some big news that uh, is going to affect me and my lifestyle here on this property. And uh, this is what this brief video is about really. So uh, as you just saw in the intro, that was actually just some old footage that I reversed, uh, played in reverse. But uh, that is what will happen in the near future, namely that I will move my tiny house and I will actually sell it uh, because uh, time has now come for me to uh, to make a major shift in my life and that is to sell that old tiny house that I built in uh, 2019 and moved into in uh, 2020 and moved out on this property in 2021. So I've lived out here for some years now and uh, my lifestyle has changed uh, dramatically um, and that is why I, I need to sell this house because something new needs to happen. And uh, for one, I got this property and started to become much more self-sufficient, which means that I need some space obviously in my house to have all the crops for the winter. And it is not really so easy for me in this house now because I have my outhouse, but it's not insulated, so it's not uh, yeah, it's not good for keeping crops in winter because they can freeze, and um, and also it's not a suitable house for self-sufficiency in in many ways. And then also uh, <laughs> I got a dog at some point, a fairly big dog in in Bosimat. And he's a great dog and I love him very much, but he is just a little too big, especially during the winter time, to be living with me in that very narrow space that I have. Like in winter time, we spend obviously more time indoors, but because of the narrow space that this house has, the, the floor space, he needs to in a way be on the sofa more or less all the time when he's inside. Uh, and sometimes he doesn't because it's too hot for him to to lie there by the uh, by the stove. So he chooses to lie on the floor, which is perfectly okay. But it's also a bit, um, yeah, it's a bit difficult to navigate in the house when he just takes up all of the floor space. So you get this sense of everything being very cramped uh, in that house because he's like he's just taking up so much space. Uh, so it's a bit intense in a way to, to be living with such a big dog during the half of the winter. I live here only half of the winter uh, when, when, when he is like that in a way. So it is not an ideal situation for me. Uh, so uh, that's one reason. And also actually my tiny house is not registered as a legal summer house. It's more like an RV or more, maybe more like a camper van. And I cannot really get it legal as it is right now because it's uh, not insulated well enough to be registered as a, an actual summer house. And of course I could insulate it a bit more, but it's still the problem with the floor space is still the same. <laughs> so uh, obviously that is uh, uh, an issue for me. And then you need to spend a lot of time just keeping the stove going and also the way that I live with my water tank and the way that my systems are set up. It's very romantic in, in many ways, but it's also very time consuming and I cannot like do anything else in my life. I can actually only do practical stuff almost all the time because I need to always keep the house going. So it's a lot of work just to keep the house going during the winter. And if I wanted to be more creative, like writing articles or maybe writing a new book, I actually wrote books back in the day. I wrote two books and uh, I, I wouldn't be able to do that because this house just takes up all of my time. So I'm, I think I'm at a point where I'm ready to, to live in a way where I can have that surplus energy and time to invest in maybe also some somewhat more creative projects in my life and, and develop myself in that direction. So, and, and the house, it is very uh, dark because it's surrounded by trees and it's to the north on the property, which means that all the trees are to the south. So if I wanted to have my house heated up because it's very cold and because it's in the shadow, then I would need to take down almost all of the trees on the property, which obviously I won't do. 
Uh, so, but it just means that I have a little bit of problems with moist if I don't uh, actively do something to reduce that in the house. Uh, and it's a bit cold, really, uh, so it's not an ideal location for the house. So that just means that I'm at a point in my life right now where I'm ready now to, to make the next step, sell this tiny house and do something else. Which is why I will build a new tiny house on this property as a registered and legal summer house. And uh, that house will be 30 square meters. It will have a bathroom, it will have a kitchen, it will have a cold room that you can enter from the kitchen where I can keep all the crops and produce from my garden. It will have a dining area and a sofa, living room area and two sleeping lofts. And also it will have a front porch with a roof uh, above it where I can uh, watch the view to the meadow in the evening where the sun goes down. So it will be a completely new living situation for me and it will be much more comfortable for me to be living there. But the house is also different in the way that it has to be on grid for it to be legal. And I just got my building application uh, approved actually on the very day that I arrived in uh, Norway for my vacation. Uh, but it was only possible if I made it so that it is on grid which means that I need uh, to have electricity installed from the main grid and I also need a tank in the, in the soil, uh, dug down in the soil for the grey water from the house. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that I'm totally done with living in an off-grid kind of situation because I can still have solar panels and uh, I can collect rainwater and use it in the house and I will experiment with something that I will call a hybrid house which means that it is a house that is able to be on grid but it can also go into off grid mode because I still like the idea about having to save resources and the house in a way uh, telling you how to save resources because resources are scarce because you only have the amount of sun energy that you can collect on the batteries and you also uh, will need to collect rainwater and be saving water. Uh, I'm not done with that journey yet. Uh, I can clearly feel that, but I also need to have a better house to live in, so I need to have it on grid uh, to some extent. But I will find the balance uh, of how I can live in a meaningful way in a hybrid house, as I call it. Uh, so that is part of the new journey. Another very big part of this journey is to build with obviously sustainable building materials and also techniques and make something called, uh, I think you could call it like a breathable house, uh, which means that it transports the moist from inside of the house out through the building materials. And it can do that if you use organic uh, natural materials like wooden fiber insulation for instance. The old building paradigm uh, cannot do that because it's uh, in that you cover everything in plastic and it's obviously based on the fossil fuel industry uh, and, and out of that tradition. But this uh, new way of building breathable houses with uh, natural materials, it is becoming much more popular here in Denmark in these years. So you see more and more houses being built like that. And obviously I want to build my house as sustainable as possible so it's less fossil fuels and more natural materials. Also the foundation for the house will not be uh, a lot of holes with concrete in them because that's obviously not very sustainable. Uh, it will be something called ground screws that do not um, impact the soil very much because it's just a metal screw that you uh, drive down into the soil and put the house on top of the, all the screws. So, uh, so I will be experimenting with a lot of different techniques and materials and like also uh, ways to heat up the house automatically with the sun energy and also connecting the house with the garden by design using permaculture principles and circulating resources from the house in the garden. Yeah, and generally just trying to make the house as sustainable as possible really. So you might be wondering when I'm starting, is it next spring or when is it? And actually it is next week or maybe in the week uh, after next week. So very soon I have already bought the ground screws so I will just need to clear this uh, piece of uh, land just behind me here and then I'm actually ready to get the screws in the soil and order the, the timber from the sawmill and then get going. Yeah I'm really excited to get started and the plan, my ambition is to have a roof up 
uh, by the end of October. So that is the plan for now. So for the next couple of months, I will uh, have a lot of building videos on this channel, obviously, because I will spend all my time almost just building this new house and get it secured uh, before winter, before the first frost. Uh, but rest assured, uh, those of you who are not too interested in building videos, I will try to mix the content up a little bit so that I don't only show building videos, but also some more uh, talking videos and reflexive videos. So for the next couple of months or so, I will spend most of my time actually building this house. Uh, but I should be able to do that because it's not that big a house and I have almost all of the time in the world to do it. I just need a decent weather to do it. So I cross my fingers for shiny weather days here in October and then I just can't wait to get going now.